and welcome to Winning Conversations. We are so glad you're here. Today is another Turn the Tables episode. We have Hannah and Terry Miner. How are you guys? Doing good. good. Super good. Dan and I, how are you, Dan? I'm doing well. You're doing I'm doing well. well. Thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> what do I look? What do I, what's going we're on? We're still trying to figure out the camera <laughs> thing. Where are we right now? So, we're glad y'all are here. I know Hannah's been part of our crew for the entire first season. Yes, and I loved every moment of it. I loved getting to interview people and learn their stories. Coming from the church, you know, we were new. We didn't know a lot of people, so it was really great to invest that time into them through the podcast and get to know, like, the joy story. Right. Oh, I would have never known that, and they're such precious people. So I really enjoyed my time here with you all, and I know we're in a season of transition. Yeah, so we do have an announcement to make on the podcast. Wah, wah. Um, unfortunately, this is a farewell episode to Hannah as one of our hosts. So um, the good news is God's called to more and more things. So oftentimes our plates get full. Yes. And then God brings us uh, a bit larger plate and a larger plate, right? Yes. So, so tell us about uh, what that transition is looking like. So um, a few months back, Tanya and I were talking about like the next year coming up, what that looked like. Um, I kept feeling in my heart that um, that there was change as the Holy Spirit was doing a lot of things in me. Um, and Terry was a part of all of that too. And uh, and so anyways, I got a word from my spiritual mom. I, I told Tanya, I was like, I can't step away until I get my word from the Lord. And I went over to my spiritual mom's house on like a Thursday morning. And she's like, Hannah, I think I got a word for you. And I'm like, download it to me, all of it. Like I receive. And it was exactly what the Lord was speaking to me about. Let my yes be yes and my no be no. And in that time, the Lord was really showing me um, commitment to things and how in this new season that he's bringing me into, that he can't have me scattered, that I have to be one-minded, completely focused because there's bigger things on the horizon. And within that time period, a very he did a really quick work. I had to step into um, a season season of complete obedience, um, where the Lord said, you can either trust me completely or bow to the feet of man in the situation. And I need you to step up and I need you to be my voice. And in that season, it truly like it purged every ounce of me and everything that I thought that I held on to with such a nat natural grasp. And he said, you have to trust me in this. And so as I did that, I was, I've told Terry, he's walked through this whole thing with me. He's seen everything that's happened. It unlocked a door in the supernatural that really um, was quite profound. Um, when I walked that step of obedience, that's why obedience is so important and listening is so important. And your yes to the Lord in the seasons he has you in is so special. Um, cause once I purged all of me and I said, I, I bow to your feet, Jesus, I worship you only. You are my one and only, I don't look to man. I don't look to please. This is me and you. And when I did that, it turned that key in the supernatural to where when Terry's father was alive, this is a brief, I'm trying to make this as brief as I can. When his father was alive, we operated a lot in the 4d, which we hear a lot. The ministers like, um, uh, Bill Winston's talking about now um, time and how time is different in the supernatural. We also had a minister that came here and preached on that. Um, and so that was a lot of what we were taught at a very young age from under Terry's dad. And so when we connected to his ministry, we were having strong prophetic dreams. Anybody that connected themselves to his dad's ministry, we'd have prophetic dreams. Mine a lot were protection over people that I loved and they would happen continually. Well, when his dad went home to be with the Lord, um, those dreams kind of ceased from everybody in the congregation, everybody that was a part of it. We led oh, wow, for yeah. a while. Yeah. We led and pastored the church for three years, and the Lord told us to move here. It's a part of our story we right, talked about right. before. And uh, we would maybe get a dream like once or twice a year, but it wasn't like coming like it was. We went to a meeting. We went to a meeting at a church, and a woman walked up to us and gave us a word, and she said, have your notebooks ready by your bed because you're going to start dreaming again. Mm -hmm. And I took that like for me, I took that for Terry, we yeah. took that for all of us and she gave us more to that, but I didn't feel it then. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of just like waiting on it. But like I said, when I, when I recently walked into that season of obedience where the Lord said, it's me and you only. And when I did that, like I said, it really purged a lot. So it brings about a lot of emotions right. and just feeling his presence. And when I did that, it really opened those doors and I started dreaming again. And he started giving me visions. He started giving me prophetic words. And then he told, he said, Hannah, it's your time 
through other confirmations too and other people walking up to me and giving me prophetic words quickly he said it's your time to make a platform and I said but Lord I don't want a platform for me like I'm not trying to be an influencer I, and, I, and I have a word to speak on that too I think our humble bubble I think Satan can use our I'm just humble I don't want to do this and off, oftentimes take away the testimony that the Lord does want to exalt in people and how he does want to use right. people so it's always important again that we're listening but um, I've just been having so many prophetic dreams I've been having visions. The Lord's been giving us um, just new levels of things to come and showing us things to come where people are walking up to us all the time and giving us prophetic word, which you always test to approve. You never just accept any word from anybody. We have to test to approve. We've been trained young by our spiritual parents, by generals in the faith. I think a lot of people look at us like we're just youngins, and we are, (laughs) but we've been trained for many years under like, um, how would you put it, honey? Like very- Well, just great spiritual leaders that, you know, you know, like, it's a blessing to have people in your life that you can trust that will, that whatever you're being trained in, it checks out in the word. So there's always a scripture for whatever that training is. Right. So you learn how to measure it with the word. And if you can't find it in the word, it's not from God. Yeah. And, and the Lord will speak to you from that word and he'll keep revealing more and more over time. And right. I think a lot of the training we had, even just like coming into this church and mm-hmm. learning so much and getting to know people and, um, environments and I think with all of the spiritual heading that we've had, we, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm quick to see with spiritual eyes rather than like in our natural right. fleshly eyes. And so when, um, w- someone could walk in the room or I, I sense stuff differently cause I'm constantly like my radars on spiritual eyes, seeing things in the 4d cause that's what we were literally trained in for so long and so it's a it's a sensitivity but i believe it's a sensitivity to the holy spirit yes. and the working that he's doing in this time where he's really calling us to be the hands and feet of jesus and he's really put on me make this platform and i was like it's not for me he said it's for the nations and you're to be a voice for the nations so and terry can testify to all of this yes. too because he saw the season where as you say it's always been my heart but I had seasons of walking through my faith journey with my babies, walking through the faith journey of different things that we've stepped doors we've had to step into. And so now it's like, he's brought it with a conviction of like a, you have to do this now. Right. And Mm -hmm. I I literally will open like a magazine of like a a child and just start weeping. And I can let you talk more on that if you want to (laughs) about seasons. Well, with the seasonal part is the, the beauty in the season is no matter if, and if it's like, say it's something that's in the current season that it seems like it has absolutely nothing to do with the the destination or the calling or where you think you want to be down the road. Every single season is very significant and God needs us knowing his significance in each season. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you know, we can be, you know, in a place of, cause we've all have been there at some point where we're ungrateful or complained or impatient and, that's not what's spiritually God. healthy or yeah. naturally healthy because God is saying, I'm doing something now mm-hmm. that you need before mm-hmm. you get to the next. Yes, right. And so everything is ministry, whether if it's with your kids, babies being born or whatever, yeah. it's all ministry. Right. It's all, it's all ministry. And so it's like, when you think about preachers, it's like preachers in a pulpit isn't the only ministry. Like cameramen, that's a ministry. Mm-hmm. People who are working on the audio, that's a ministry. And when you learn about the word of God and how to operate in a spirit of excellence and want to be a vessel that he can use, he'll, he, he, then he will give you your own revelation on how everywhere your hands and feet is, you're ministering and you're serving him. Mm-hmm. And he's the one that's going to give you your inheritance because you're working for the Lord, not right. for people. And that, think- and that spiritual mindset. I think that's pretty powerful, and that's a lot of what a lot, a lot of what these stories get to be told as. As look at the people who are on those back pages, the people that are on the mm-hmm. behind the scenes and doing so much. Equally so important. So it's yeah. it's imperative that we do exactly what you're talking about. Hear from God. Yes. Be really fine tuned with this with the Holy Spirit, and that's what y'all have done with your lives. Yeah. Yes. Um, how, I think a lot of people haven't seen the behind the scenes of our don't. years of service <laughs> before we even got here. You know, people have no idea. And the Lord says takes. that He will take all of that time. Right. And He remembers remembers all of that time of servanthood and that he's going to reward it. And I truly, even while I was getting like ready for today, 
I was like, I truly felt the Holy Spirit telling me, this is your reaping season. This is your harvest season. You've done all of these years of service up until this point, and you still are serving. You're constantly serving me, but you've done sacrificial serving, and now it's time for your harvest. And I truly believe this is our harvest season that yes. we're walking in right now. That's exciting. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yes. And that lines up with what you're describing, that you're mm-hmm. hearing from the Lord talking about being a voice and an advocate for the nations and yes. building a platform for him to meet these needs. I think that's pretty powerful, right? That's Yes, it's amazing. Like, <laughs> yeah. Being in obedience to where you're going, mm-hmm. where he, let me remember that, where he's pushing you to and moving you to and directing you towards. Yes. To, like to be in agreement with that and obedient to that mm-hmm. is paramount. It's huge. Yes. It's yeah. huge. Mm-hmm. And so like right now, so I mean, obviously these are things coming from a ministry pers- perspective. How is that impacting here? How is that? At Heritage. At Heritage. Um, I went to a women's conference recently. I was supposed to go with my spiritual parents to um, Bethel. They were in Austin recently. I was supposed to go with okay. my family there. And the Lord, it kept, it wasn't working out. And the Lord kept telling me, he's like, no, no, I want you to be a part of this conference that's local here. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to go. And so I went, I, uh, the pastor met me at the front door. And she's like, hey, Hannah, how are you? And I'm like in tears because I'm just like so yielded to whatever the Holy Spirit's about to show me at this point. And uh, I was like, I don't know why I'm here, but the Lord told me to be here. And she was like, okay, we're so glad to hear. And she starts crying. And um, anyways, the word was so profound for the season that I'm in. Afterwards, after she got done ministering, she came up to me and she gave me a word. And she said, when I was in Africa, uh, I was really wanting to adopt this one child, which again is the season I'm in is advocating for the nation. She says, really wanting to adopt this one child. And, um, and the Lord told me, I can adopt this one child or I can impact thousands. And she said, and that is where the Lord is placing you. She said, you can help this one house or you can impact thousands of children for my name. And, uh, and that's truly just this, this, um, this call to mothering this next generation has been so profoundly spoken to me through prophetic word from her. We also got a word while we were at Southwest. We came just expecting for this new season what the Lord mm-hmm. was doing. Oh, yeah, and I told day. Terry, yeah. when we were, we were like getting on the freeway, passing QT, I'll never forget it. And I put my hands up in the air and I said, I said, Terry, there's something the Lord's doing new in me. And I don't know what it is, but he's going to show us what it is this week. We're going to fast. We're going to pray mm-hmm. and come expecting. And, um, and I said, whatever it is, it's bigger than me. I don't yeah. know what it is right yeah. now, but he's going to show us, but it's bigger than me. And I just started weeping. Yeah. And, uh, and through that, through that, um, you can talk more about how the Lord's been speaking to you about Africa and the prophetic word that we got backstage. I mean, just constantly, even the first day we had a lady that ministered to us and it was so accurate about how we're to bridge the gap between, um, this generation and the next for our ministry purposes, Mm -hmm. but also like speaking nations over. Well, before I even get into that, I want to say one quick part that goes along with that as well. I also see the Lord honoring you with how you're walking with the kids at Heritage. And that calling is not an expansion to something totally different. It's an expansion to the, 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 the trust. He, he trusts you with the kids here and seeing how you walk with the kids in this ministry here to where now he's expanding the, it's still here with the kids ministry, but it's also expanding the reach concerning also kids and generations all over the globe instead of, one uh, property in that type of sense. Mm-hmm. So, it, and it's like, so he can we, trust me. With we, it. we, we talked about before, like, okay, you talk about hearing from the Lord and praying in the Holy ghost for how important that is concerning um, just building yourself up, praying in the spirit very often, like nonstop. And when we do that, literally living a, a lifestyle like that will keep you in constant step with God on a sure. day-to-day basis concerning knowing, okay, what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm. And it sounds so simple and easy to us, but there's still so many people that have questions that, that, that can be answered every day if they if, if we just do it and just mm-hmm. stop and remember, nope, mm-hmm. pray in the Holy Ghost, slow down and just pray, pray in the Holy Ghost, build myself up, and then he's going to start revealing things to me, start uncovering things. Veil's going to start being taken off, and now I can start seeing what I'm supposed to be doing, where I'm supposed to go, who I'm supposed to do it with, who I'm supposed to contact, who may contact me. And the Lord will start start un- un- uncovering these things. And then whatever he speaks to you in those moments, it's his will for you. And so, like, even she was talking about missions or expansion or Africa or whatever. It's like, and Tanya made a statement, like, a, probably like five minutes ago, saying, you know, like, some people don't know or they don't know you or whatever, but it's right. like, 
even that even goes along with the the quote new thing that God is doing in all of our lives. God is doing something new in all of our lives yes. for those who have ears to hear, eyes to see, and a heart to receive. Yes. God, Amen. he's he's he, he's always looking forward for that new thing. Mm -hmm. But and that's like parallel to the uh, the uh, new things that God has for us. It's like some it's like it's like two folks. Some things are new to us, and some things are only new to other people. Like mm -hmm. like. What are they? You you may be confused and wondering what is going on. You see all these promotions; they're they're doing this now, but you have no clue. God has been speaking that to that individual fifteen years ago, twenty yeah, years right, ago, and right. dreams that that happens to all of us, right? And it's sometimes right. it's beautiful to get to see God start to speak on things yes. and expand mm -hmm. things, and then you and then and then when you uh, get an opportunity like this, or and many other opportunities, to God uh, present a time where you can actually share like this is actually something that He showed us. So long Years ago, ago 2016. But, yeah. <laughs> but it was seasonal concerning just, you know, where he needed us in that space and in that moment. Well, and so, and oftentimes God takes you a path yes. to that point. It's not linear. Yeah. yeah he needs exactly. you to receive this thing over here and he needs you to receive what he has for you over here. And he mm -hmm. needs you. To, so do this assignment. And you're like, why am I doing this assignment? Yes. What is I mean, I've done a thousand different jobs in, in yes, this local have. church. <laughs> so so there have been times, but the Lord says, I have something I have that you're going to do things this year that you've never done before yes. and do them. And those things I'm not doing anymore, but yeah. there was something I needed along the way that wow. prepared me for where we're going next, Amen. which is what you guys are saying. Yes. yes. So just yes. for complete clarity, you guys aren't leaving. Heritage we are not faith. leaving. We are God's expanding our reach. Right. And he keeps speaking that like, yeah. like we were talking about how you can, like I had that spoken prophetically over me. You can touch this one house or you can touch thousands of children and mother them. And that's the calling that he's like the conviction of the Holy spirit is all over me. And that mm -hmm. I, my hand is to be used to bless and mother future generations of children. And as a parent, I'm excited that my children's oh. pastor has a heart oh. for the nations and oh, the children of the world. Thank that's you. that's incredible. I mean, I love that you love our kids, our love kids them. of the heritage <laughs> of faith. I mean, everybody sees it. You see oh. it. You're yeah. one of the teachers there. Yeah. We all see and feel and our kids experience the presence of God because of the hand of the anointing that you have in that area. Um, but to have a children's pastor who sees beyond the walls of the church, even yes. to the ends of the earth is powerful. Yeah. Yes. That's very powerful. And to follow up what you was, uh, I'm going to, I'm not going to steal your thunder. So I'm going to lead it up to the part that you was going to say <laughs> about Africa. All our thunder. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to lead it up. So long story short, um, when my, um, well, this is many years ago, but the Lord was speaking to me, my father and our mission about Africa. And he showed us where, where we were going to go, prophetic dreams, all this. And then it started building word from word from word and confirmation upon confirmation. Well, it was a few years, you know, different seasons, mm -hmm. but everything is needed in every season, no matter what, no, no matter where you are, when you go to God, there's something that you need in that moment, right? Mm -hmm. And so he's just now bringing it back to the surface. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so we were sitting on a Sunday morning in church and the Lord, and the Lord spoke to me while Pastor Justin is, is preaching. And he said, I want you to pray about having meetings in Africa. Mm -hmm. He's talking about our ministry and uh, going out and preaching. And so I wrote it down in my notes and I elbowed the hand and I, and I was pointing to her. She said, okay, praise God. And we started back listening to Pastor Justin and closed the notebook. <laughs> Well, Zach, exactly two months later, exactly two months later, I'm backstage at uh, Southwest um, the uh, Believers Convention, and a pastor, you you uh, you know exactly who he is. Uh, uh, a pastor uh, uh, pointed me and just went like this. I walked to him. He said, "This is not for me. This is from the Lord." He said that you're supposed to speed up that process on getting your passport. And so I took that word, and then 20 minutes later, I'm <laughs> on the ground, laying on the ground, helping this girl. I'm teaching her how to her tie shoes. her shoes, and I'm making a song that we're having fun tying the shoes. And then I, <laughs> I, I get a tap on my shoulder, and this African man walks up to me, and he just points his finger in my face and says, "You're going to Africa," and then he just walks away. Oh my god! He just, he just. This is 20 minutes later, so from two months to here, then 20 minutes later, he just walks away. Well, then he comes back. Yes. After I'm done helping a girl tie her shoes, and, and then he um, introduces himself, and he's he was this um, it's it's a very very huge very huge connection, very very huge connection. Um, he's uh, one of the main um, network pastors for Uganda, and wow. every meeting that he does with either one email or phone call, he said it will he said it will bring a minimum to four to five thousand at a time, but always more. And then so he uh, for proof he shows all the videos and pictures and everything, and so. Um, as he was standing there, the Lord reminded me of that word that he spoke two months prior to that, prayer about having meetings in Africa, because I said, Lord, I don't have a connection to Africa. 
I have spiritual friends and family members that have connections, but but I'm not going to go there. I'm going to let the Lord do it, and because He's speaking this to me, and then all then all of a sudden, as that man is standing right in front of him, He said, "This is your connection to Africa," That's and awesome. then. And then he's like, Tana, come here. And I'm also like taking pictures on the victory booth for like all these foreign people who have come in. They really want their picture by the sign. He's like, Tana, come here. I see a really serious look on his face. And, and at that point I said, Lord, I like we had got the prophetic word on Monday, the first day of Southwest about nations. And then um, I said, I'm still expecting even the last day. I'm still expecting whether you show me something through a minister that's preaching today. I still need clarity on what it is that this higher calling that I'm feeling uh, and so then he's like, come here. And I walk over and the minister showing us all these pictures of these children on his phone. Mm -hmm. And then the Lord, and I'm not one to cut people off normally. <laughs> and the Lord said, no, tell him to stop, stop right there. Stop. And I was like, okay. And I see this picture of this building. I was like, please stop. I said, the Lord wanted me to tell you to stop and tell me what that picture is on your phone. And he opens it up. And it's like this really cool, what do you call that? Like a drone, drone? footage promo. Whoa, this, it's so cool. Yeah. And it's this huge building. And on my, on in, inside I'm thinking well that doesn't and it kept going off that's an orphanage but it didn't look like one and so like inside I'm like battling with the spirit you know like but it doesn't look like an orphanage and, and then he says he said that is our orphanage that we're currently building mm. and uh and he said but we can't call it that because of the way the government's cracking down and changing things we have to make it into a boarding school oh. and that's why I was feeling that mm on the inside, like with the Holy Spirit. And the and I turned to him and I start crying. And I said, the Lord told me I'm supposed to have part in that. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it looks like. I don't know what it is. And he looked at both of us. He said, just get here. Mm -hmm. and so, so when are you going to Africa? So soon. We're, 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 <laughs> that, um, <laughs> that, that, right? yeah. the chase. We're, so like, we're already working on that yeah. process. And so <laughs> uh, uh, along with me preaching and doing meetings there, the Lord opened the door for him to get every single children's pastor the, in the entire Uganda for Hannah to preach to the children's pastors, oh, the super kid awesome. curriculum and whatever the Holy Spirit puts on her heart. He said, I want you to empower my children's leaders wow. here. And so we're bringing... <laughs> So we're bringing super kids. So up. You got I told, I told, <laughs> I told um, Kelly. I'll never forget when I I, I, I messaged her and I was like, Commander has, Kelly. I said, Commander yeah. Kelly. I said, who's my spiritual mom? And I said, has super kids ever gone to Africa before? And she said, well, not really. I was like, well, guess what? It's going. It's reaching the world. Like it's like continuing continuation of her dream for that. Wow. And that's fantastic. It's just amazing. I'm excited and, about and that. And how super kids is really even just within our ministry um like here at the church how we've been so in tune to the holy spirit ever since he started doing this work with me with the activation and like he turned the key in the supernatural and what he's been showing me and how to lead my um my teachers back in hk teachers. yes one of my teachers right here dan the man and shoshana <laughs> we love them so much and um we've been like in communication on sundays where i'm like sitting everybody in a group message a video of hey the holy spirit did this in service tonight it's been really powerful terry's been in there on some of mm -hmm. the things but just the unification of the team and how we're we're all hearing right now in the spirit. We've had kids where our worship sessions, the preteen stayed with us on one whole worship session just because the power and the presence of the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit was so profound. I've had testimonies coming in from grandparents of five-year-olds who are praying in tongues and praying their love language and then wanting to go pray over their friends who are blind, a five-year-old. And just taking the limitations off of our kids because I yes. believe they're truly coming into a time and the Lord's given me a prophetic dream on the children of this generation. And how they're not going to miss a beat. Whereas it seems like COVID and all these things that happened were such a distraction. The Lord's really bringing them up into um, just his presence in a new way, in a new level. And it's strong. I feel it within um, our prayer and worship time in HK. Mm -hmm. The teachers, like we were, I told, I've been encouraging the kids to get a prayer chart where they're talking to Holy Spirit. He told me one day make that chart. I did not have time. I walk in and our teachers are so on beat that Miss Susan literally heard from the Holy Spirit and made the exact chart, the yeah. exact way the Holy Spirit had envisioned for me to make it and had it ready without me saying anything mm -hmm. to That's her. Awesome. That's this great. is what the Holy Spirit's doing. That's not only love. That's what parents love to Yes, hear. for the teachers, right. yeah. for the kids, the testimonies of right. the fruitfulness that are coming from our teachers that serve is incredible. I've had vehicles manifesting for people that are faithful servants and then something happens to their car and then a vehicle manifests in two weeks and so that's the fruitfulness of what the lord is truly doing and like terry was saying like the lord saying i can trust you with this mm -hmm. so i can trust you with more and i need you to mother these kids and i need and 
the Holy Spirit and the presence that these awesome. kids are mm-hmm. taking on in this time, it's it's like we're the right timing is yes. all I have to say. It's the right timing for this season. As yeah. As yeah. someone who's in the classes, I can tell you right now, <laughs> it, it is a it is awesome to see what's happening in there right there. And in so much mm-hmm. that again, I, I I credit so much to the community. It's a top down at this house you know from our yeah. pastoral leadership same as you like when it comes down to how we teach is because you're giving us the green light like it's the holy spirit's yeah. room just make room for them you yes. know and so it's very much that environment which is if you haven't had a chance if you have kids that are in the youth mm-hmm. they're getting fed yeah like, they're mm-hmm. they're having unbelievable experience and it's great mm-hmm. as a teacher to be in that environment so that's amazing oh, thank so we, you. Love it. we love it it is it has really been i mean like I said, just profound, even to the point where the Holy Spirit, the lessons are lining up with what the Holy Spirit's telling me to put out. And then I look at the lesson for Super Kid Academy and it's exactly the same thing. And so our teachers, I give them room to kind of be led by the Holy Spirit, of course, and they don't have to stick exactly to the outline, but the outline is what we are feeling led to do at this time. And the kids will come up. We, I had a session where the Lord's like, okay, you're gonna talk about Holy Spirit, but these kids need to know they need questions answered because they're, they don't know who Holy Spirit is to them. And they've got a lot of questions. So we sat one time before we even started worship and we answered questions about Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you right after we did that, the time of worship that we had was so, it was so powerful where I invited the kids to say, come up to the mic and, sh- and share what the Holy Spirit showing you in this time. My second, third, fourth graders, even some first graders, and they're coming up to the mic and they're sharing what the Lord's showing them during worship. And that's the level that we are getting to. Mm-hmm. Um, Terry was in there. Some of them re- received their prayer language mm-hmm. and the Lord showed me what some of them were like. They were like, I really want my prayer language and it didn't happen right away. And then the Lord gave me a vision. He said, put your hand on their stomach. And it's going to start flowing. And then right mm-hmm. when that happened, it just started flowing out of them. It was so beautiful. Mm-hmm. And Terry's been a part of all of that, too. He's really ahead in the lead whenever we go into the classroom. So it's really been awesome. The it's Lord's awesome. doing a new thing. Sounds like it's super exciting. Yes. We're really excited about it. Yes. Um, but we would be remiss not to ask you this question. <laughs> right. I think I know what it is. Episode. <laughs> Because as we're as we're transitioning and it, and it's it's a little bit better, bittersweet for us because we've loved having you on the team. We've loved having you part of this. You've made our episode so bright and so fun and so spirit led. It's been it's so Very quirky. Bright. No, I love it. It's, 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 it's been it's great. Like exactly. It. It's, yeah. It's Praise God. Effervescent. It's wonderful. So um, although we don't get to carry you into this next season, we're so thankful you're still part of our family. You're still part of our church. You're pouring into our kids all the time. But we cannot finish this episode without asking you, what does it mean to make winners in life? Um, um, it I sounds think, like you're doing it, but ah, I'll give you a chance to I just it. want to encourage whoever's watching that there is a deeper level. And I feel like sometimes we sit and we are just so content with where we are and what the Lord's doing. And just like, as someone said recently, getting spiritually fat, but there's a deeper level with the Holy Spirit that he wants us to enter into. And I think is if making a winner in life is really just submission, complete submission to the Holy Spirit, his will, and letting him speak to you and take you up higher to these new things that he wants to reveal to you. And I think if we do that as a church body, um, as people of the world, that we're going to see greater and greater things and just complete submission to the Holy Spirit, his power. And when we enter into worship, just that complete, um, just being in all of all that he is. And I feel like that's um, what the body of Christ really needs right now. I think that's the season that we're entering into. And it's Mm -hmm. a key to so much being open for you in the spiritual realm and seeing. So... That's what I would encourage people with. That's awesome. That's, that's great. <laughs> every answer is great. Yeah. We, we are so blessed to have every answer be fantastic. Right. So. I know you're wanting to end this, but I also want to share one more thing. If that's okay, we can edit it out. I don't have to. But I, I just love the Navajo. I really want to give um, all the glory to God in that. We're going to be, our children's ministry is going to be partnering with the Navajo Nation and the children there in the season coming up for Christmas. They have Ooh. Christmas. Um, how do they call it? Uh, Native Noel. And we're going to be partnering with them and blessing them with gifts. And the Lord really has it heavy on my heart to reach these indigenous people in these indigenous communities. I'm actually learning Navajo right now. Right, honey? Mm -hmm. I'm learning Navajo. But um, he really has it on my heart to reach these communities that are not seen, that are not heard. Um, When I went to visit, it was literally like a third world country. 
inside the United States of America. And it's time that we as a people stand up and we speak up about it. And so he's really had that on my heart. So there'll be many visitations like we were talking about mm-hmm. how my hands are here, but he's also having me go into these um, communities like in Adarco and the Navajo and Amen. some different tribes. So I'm That's really excited. Awesome. Yes. So tell. it's a part of all yeah. of it. I was like, did I talk about the Navajo? I, don't, I can't remember, but that's really where he's leading me. So that's really awesome. awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. <clears throat> well, one, there's so much like this could go on for so long. <laughs> there's so much good stuff here. So, but again, thank you guys so much for coming. Did you guys yeah, have fun? Sure. Yes. Yeah, so fun. Yes. So fun. It's, isn't fun. it fun being Always. on that side? Huh? Always. Isn't it fun being on that side? Of I know. It? Right? I know. <laughs> well, again, we are so happy that you were a part of this and we are so sad that you're leaving, but we are so happy that where you're going. Yeah. It is you. so exciting for both you guys, the ministry, what you're being called to, the obedience. It is super inspirational for us to see it and, and watch it yeah. and like just sit back and like just applaud you guys and celebrate you and pray for you guys moving forward. So yeah, but faith, y'all are equal. Th- y'all are yeah. equal blessing. And yes. we are encouraging each other. Thank God. We, yeah, again, yes. we love you guys. We're so happy that you're a part of this church, that this house, yeah. we are, yes. you guys are a blessing and the yes. things that you guys do. But we want to say thank you so much. I didn't know where to look. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who am I looking at? Uh, thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, if you're listening, thank you so much for watching. If you're watching, uh, we just want to say we can't wait to see you again next Friday for another winning conversation. Bye. Bye.